بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو آر کورس الیکٹرانک کامرس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ آ فرسٹ لیکچر دا فرسٹ لیکچر از میجرلی اباؤٹ این اوور ویو آف الیکٹرانک کامرس ای کامرس ڈی ناٹ ایگزسٹ ٹل نائنٹین نائنٹی فور نائنٹین نائنٹی فور واز دا ایئر ون ایوری تھنگ Of course, the idea of starting it, uh, it may have been uh, sprung out a few years earlier, but 1994 was the year when things formally started as e-commerce. From 1994 t- till this current date, e-commerce has actually transformed into a trillion dollar industry and which is on the rise. We can well imagine that. the future of electronic commerce it can it can possibly replace the traditional businesses but let's not go towards that now 1990 was a period of experimentation and dynamism this was the period when people started to think when people started to realize that something better can happen when people started to realize that they may have the capacity to do things in a better way in a convenient way in a more effective way This was the period when some businesses of course started to adopt electronic commerce and as we know that when something new comes along um th- there is always a difference of opinion uh, some businesses were in favor of electronic commerce and some businesses were skeptical about it and they did not believe it they did not believe that e-commerce was something that would be sustainable or something that would be successful uh things uh, kept going in this way then in 2000 what happened a global market crash happened uh, uh, we will not go into the reasons of that global market crash but uh, relevant to this lecture what happened some businesses they started to believe that the reason for this specific crash was electronic commerce Uh, they they were initially skeptical about it there was a lot of confusion about it because it was something new so somehow some people started to believe that the reason for this crash was 2000 it was electronic commerce and this global market crash actually some of the biggest organizations they went out of business so it was uh, a great shock for the overall business community people some people believe that online business electronic commerce was the reason for that but some people um, they were still in favor of electronic commerce and they carried on with it but some businesses dropped at this point in time things kept going this way and by 2008 the electronic commerce industry was so established that it was growing at the percentage of 25 annually now 25% annual growth uh in terms of growth it is a huge number uh and right now uh at this point of time it is even uh growing at a more faster and more quicker rate this was an overview of electronic commerce then what happened electronic commerce as we know it in the current time uh it has been evolving from time to time so in this current diagram we can see a small evolution of electronic commerce it started with traditional electronic commerce an example of that can be amazon when traditionally uh there were websites and people used to visit that websites and from there people can buy stuff now this is a traditional model of electronic commerce with the advent of information technology and improvement in our communication uh this thing the traditional e-commerce somehow transformed into social e-commerce uh we can say that social e-commerce was basically the next step of traditional e-commerce what happened in social e-commerce the social media concept came in and then in this concept the social media was being used as a major tool for conducting electronic commerce then the next step was mobile e-commerce now uh social e-commerce and mobile mobile e-commerce uh, they can be uh, they are not very much difference but the major difference is that when we started to conduct commerce or conduct businesses on our handheld devices 
now hand held devices means that uh, we, we can conduct commerce whenever we are wherever we are uh, there was no binding of location or you have to be in a certain place to conduct commerce but these three differences these are evolution but that does not mean that one has replaced the other one nowadays in the current arena we can see all three of them um just being there at the same time so this is how uh, e-commerce started to transform uh, let's come towards a definition of e-commerce uh, the formal definition of e-commerce is the use of internet web and applications to transact business more formally digitally enabled commercial transactions between and among organizations and individuals now the first thing the first thing to note here is to remember that the use of internet web and applications to transact businesses uh, this is important to remember that the basic concepts of business are still there but the difference here lies in the mode that which we are using and what are those modes internet web and applications now uh, there might be a certain confusion that mostly um, um we consider internet and web uh, as synonymous but in technical terms internet and web are not synonymous and these are two different words but we will get back to uh, what we will get to it later on uh, let's uh, complete the definition first the next thing is more formally digitally enabled commercial transactions between and among organizations and individuals comparing it to the traditional business we can see that the similarity between in this uh, the similarity in this definition and the traditional business is conducting transaction among organizations and individual but the difference here is the word digitally enabled any transaction when it is digitally enabled when it is carried on a digital medium we can say that it is electronic commerce okay so this was the definition of electronic commerce now there is one more thing to clarify that there are two terms which can often be confused and mostly we use it synonymously electronic commerce and electronic business but in in technical terms these two are different things what is electronic business electronic businesses are basically uh, digitally enabled transactions and processes within a firm like the mis that they use or some other logistic software or whatever they do that would lie in the category of electronic business to simply stated electronic business is basically means the internal operations of any business when they are performed on a certain it uh, on a certain it medium with the help of some information technology tools we would say that it is electronic business and what is electronic commerce we have studied the definition of it that when people use the internet the web and different applications to transact business so this rem- uh, this difference should be remembered because uh, when speaking technically uh, this can make a difference now the next point is that why do we need to study e-commerce why is it so important that is a question if we think about it uh, there are many other uh, ways of commerce uh, for example uh, for example i have mentioned two here tv commerce and highway commerce Uh, there are a lot more if we think about it there are no specific courses or textbooks or magazines or seminars about tv commerce or highway commerce but there is a dedicated course assigned to electronic commerce now what is the reason the reason behind is that e-commerce is different and it is more powerful than the other ways of commerce the other ways of commerce which is conducted by some other mediums for example television or highway commerce highway commerce basically means that uh, we might see different billboards or these types of communications on highways uh, um, there are a lot of other print commerce bagaira theek hai so e-commerce is different and it is more powerful now there are a lot of differences but one defining difference which makes e-commerce special than all other types of commerce which are conducted through certain medium uh 
that major difference is it can be labeled as the difference between mass marketing and customized marketing so the debate is between mass marketing and customer marketing and this debate actually makes e-commerce superior to these other ways of e-commerce <clears throat> sorry now what is mass marketing and what is customized marketing when we talk about tv commerce or highway commerce or for that matter print commerce or any other way that is available other than e-commerce this these things they actually encompass mass marketing what they do they mass market a certain product <clears throat> now uh, we all are aware of how important marketing is to our business mass marketing versus customized marketing tv commerce and highway commerce it represents mass marketing and electronic commerce represents customized marketing now let's go into a little more detail what is mass marketing and we all know what mass marketing is but what are the uh, the highlights of mass marketing what it actually does what mass marketing does is that it limits us to geographic boundaries for example there is a tv ad for example there is uh, a certain billboard on a highway it has to be limited to a certain geographic boundary for example the tv advertisements Uh, which may be running in germany which may be running in russia on the tv uh, we cannot access them or maybe if somehow we access them through some satellite or something they are not relevant to us they are of no use to us for example if i am sitting in pakistan and i see uh, ad of a certain product uh, which is being aired in russia so it would be of no use to me because that product with those offers and with that prices and with that specifications most probably will not be available to me here in pakistan <clears throat> so this is why mass marketing limits us to geographic boundaries because uh, these type of commerce tv commerce highway commerce they are all limited they are confined to a certain location now that location might be a country or that location might be a state or that might be a smaller part of a country so mass marketing the first point is that it limits us to geographic boundaries the second problem here is that it has limited options it connects with the first point uh because we are living in a certain geographic boundaries this is why we are limited to options only av available in that certain boundary for example if i am living in a certain area so all the options that are available to me are the options which are present in the area which i am living in i cannot access to different options which are in some other country or another state or another continent theek hai so these two points now the last and a very important part is known as information asymmetry now we all know symmetry symmetry means when two sides of a certain shape or anything is are balanced asymmetry means when there is a certain tilt to one side now speaking about information whenever we are uh, being involved in a transaction either we are a seller or we are a buyer uh, there is a certain information about the product about the market and we need to have that information in order to get us a fair deal now if we do not have proper information we may not get a fair deal uh to 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 give you a single simple example uh if i am looking for a certain laptop in a market and i am not aware of what the actual price of this laptop is and i am not aware of what sort of quality that certain brand is offering so maybe it is very much possible that someone might sell me something overpriced someone might sell me something uh more expensive than how expensive it actually is theek hai so information asymmetry means that when we are talking about mass marketing or when we are talking about uh even traditional marketing what happens here that there is always is an information asymmetry for example you go to a certain shop um you you see a certain product there you have no way of knowing 
all the details about that product. You have no way of getting all the information about that product. But what happens in electronic commerce is electronic commerce eliminates this information asymmetry. It provides you with all the information. A simple example I'll give you. For example, you are searching for a certain product on daraz.pk. You see that product is priced 200 rupees over there. Now, using electronic commerce, you have the ability to compare that price. You have the ability to compare qualities of different products. You have the ability to compare the price of a certain product in different places. So this is how we have information asymmetry in mass marketing and we have information symmetry in electronic marketing, right? So this was how um, we wanted to highlight mass marketing. But on the other hand, e-commerce, it highlights, it encompasses, it represents customized marketing. Now we all know what is customized marketing. First point is to remember that e-commerce, it eliminates all the three problems that we were facing in mass marketing. In e-commerce, we are not confined to geographic boundaries because you can purchase something uh, from America while sitting in Pakistan. We do not have limited options because the the whole world, the, the global market is open to us and we can access that market. And the third one, information asymmetry was a problem and that was also solved by e-commerce. So this is how we can say that e-commerce is better than uh, the other ways of commerce. Another important point is customized marketing. Nowadays, we know that um, um, the marketing tells us that customers are very important and customers are the people for whom all the businesses are working. And there's this current era of competition in this current era of uh, a powerful consumer, a consumer who actually have the choice. What is the power of a consumer? The power of a consumer is the ability to choose. In the older time, the consumer did not have power because the consumer did not have options to choose. But nowadays, as a consumer, we have so many options and we are free to choose among any of them. So this is what gives power to the customers. And this is why customers are nowadays so much important to companies. So customized marketing means that we should we should tailor, we should tailor different messages and different products and different offers to each and every consumer individually according to their needs. So this is something, uh, giving them personalized messages. Now this is something we can do in electronic commerce, but we may not be able to do it on a TV advertisement or a highway commerce. A TV ad or a highway ad, uh, it, it has one consistent message for everyone. You have no control over it. But on contrary, in e-commerce, we have this control. Uh, we have the ability to individually touch, individually contact our customers in a different way with a different message. Okay. So this was um, uh, a little explanation of why e-commerce is important. Now let's talk about some certain unique features of e-commerce, which makes e-commerce special than the other modes of business. The first one is known as ubiquity. Now, what is ubiquity? Ubiquity means being everywhere all the time. Ubiquity actually liberates us from the constraints of time and from the constraints of our geography. Okay? Ubiquity means when a certain business is everywhere and it is all the time. And we can very well see that all the uh, electronic businesses um, I'm sure aap sab ne bhi kisi na at some point aap ne uh, purchases ki hui hongi. So we are all aware of different options that we have. Uh, if we talk about this country, we have the Raz.pk and um, many other platforms. If we talk about, if we talk globally, uh, Amazon might be the biggest name in electronic commerce. So if we look at both of them, if we look at the Raz.pk or if we look at Amazon.com, these things are available to us everywhere and every time. There are no time constraints. You can access it in the morning or you can access it in the evening and you can access it 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. 
and everywhere it is everywhere you are not confined to a certain location you can access it from anywhere and you can access any corner of this globe so the first thing about ubiquity is that things are available to us everywhere and every time the other thing is the transformation of marketplace into market space marketplaces are the physical marketplaces that we have our different markets where we go to and buy grocery for our houses now those marketplaces has constraints but e-commerce converts this marketplace into a market space where there are where there are no limitations of time and there are no limitations of um, what place you can access or not there are no geographical limitations right so marketplace is confined to time and geography but market space is free from those limitations the other thing is uh, reduced transaction cost when we are operating online uh, the transaction costs are actually lower uh because when we try to um, buy something physically we need to travel and we need to invest a lot of time uh we need to invest a lot of energy but in this case the transactions costs are re- are reduced cognitive energy is also reduced because uh when we are going online uh, we spend a lot less effort while we are browsing to different things in comparison to actually trying to find the perfect jacket for you in a physical market if you want to look for a good jacket uh, in a market uh, you may uh, you may visit 15 to 20 shops easily to find the right jacket for you so this is a lot of cognitive energy but when we are operating online we can uh, we can just very simply try to find what we want For example if you want to buy a certain car of a certain model now imagine visiting each and every showroom in your locality and asking them about that specific car some might have it some might not but for example if you are looking for a car online if you are looking for a car on parkwheels.com you just write the name of that car you specify the city you specify the year you specify all all the details whether you want a manual transmission or you want automatic transmission uh, mileage and each and every de- detail you just select that you apply that filter and within a second you will get the results that you want which are specific to you so this is ubiquity this is the first unique feature of e-commerce now coming towards the second one global reach as we have discussed it earlier what e-commerce does it eliminates regional and cultural boundaries while operating online we do not have regional and cultural boundaries uh, when i'm sitting in pakistan i can access any market in the world when i'm sitting in pakistan um, th- th- there won't be any cultural boundary i won't face any language issues or or other um cultural issues so this is what e-commerce does it eliminates regional and cultural boundaries coming towards the next point universal standards universal standards when we use the word standard here we mean standards of technology what are those technology what are those technological uh, details that we use in e-commerce the technological details that we use in e-commerce are standard globally uh, to say it in simple words um, um, if you are in a muslim country or if you are in a christian country or if you are in a hindu country whatever country you are working in whatever government whatever culture all these things does not matter because the standards of a technology are the same universally you need internet you need a computer and you need a certain web presence these are the things that you will need uh, if we talk about uh, the currency now um when we are operating online currency usually does not create a barrier when we are operating physically yes we do know we do need that specific currency but online it does not matter uh in the same way uh 
the cost and effort of entry into a certain business it is also reduced because when you are operating online uh, you do not need a physical infrastructure so the cost of entry into um, into electronic business is is less because we have universal standards everywhere easy price discovery and we have low search cost low search effort and low search cost coming to us the next point richness richness of content is what we actually mean here the complexity of content of a certain message the magnitude of content the quality of content these things are a lot better in e-commerce as compared to other uh, medium of ad- advertising uh, sorry not advertising other mediums of business theek hai uh, of course traditional markets has great great richness of information because we have a face to face contact we can uh, we can indulge into discussions we can see the facial cues and many other things so e-commerce may not beat traditional markets in the richness of information but it surely does beat all other uh, mediums that we have an interesting thing here to remember is that reach reach means how uh, how much you can access how far you can go in a certain business so reach will always be inversely proportional to richness reach will always be inversely proportional to richness uh, let's take an example uh, in traditional markets when we physically go to a certain market theek hai now traditional market has a very low reach a certain business working in abbottabad or working in islamabad uh, cannot even reach the consumers in karachi if they are operating traditionally but if they are operating online so that certain business in abbottabad or that certain business in islamabad it can reach globally right so reach means so a reach is inversely proportional to richness as we have as as i started with an example that when you go to a physical market now there is a lot of richness in that contact we have face to face discussions we have a lot of things we have a lot of things which we can read which we can assess which we cannot actually assess while operating online but a negative point is that in traditional markets we have lesser reach uh, talking about the other media like tv and print now they have a bigger reach they can uh, reach to the whole country they can reach to a whole region but the downside to it is that there is no richness in that message how much can a tv ad give you it it is very confined it is very limited but the unique thing about e-commerce here is that it gives you a good reach as well as good richness compared to other media of course we are here we are not competing with the traditional market because e-commerce cannot compete uh, with the traditional markets when it comes to richness but it is better than other mediums then we have interactivity there is always a two way communication in e-commerce which is a plus point uh, talking about the other modes of communication for example a tv ad or a print ad or any other thing or a, or maybe some um, sales promotion offer or whatever communication it might be uh, there is always one way communication but talking about e-commerce it gives us the ability of two way communication which is very important for customer satisfaction and a great uh, buying experience um it gives you more like a face to face experience not exactly a face to face experience but near to that then we have information density information density means the amount and quality of information that is available to us uh as i have mentioned earlier that while going online you can uh, you can take information <clears throat> of a certain product around the globe you can compare it you can compare the qualities you can compare the specifications you can compare the prices this is now something which we cannot do in a physical market so we can safely say that information density uh, is better in electronic commerce as compared to traditional 
commerce or any other uh, medium which is being used to conduct business uh, e-commerce reduces information collection and communication costs of course you are just sitting on your computer you are using free internet and you can get all the information you want with a very less cost and with a very less effort as compared to traditional businesses uh and electronic commerce it re reduces information collection and communication cost and it increases the currency the accuracy and timeline of information currency of information means how current it is how new it is currency of information means how new it is how recent it is and of course we do need recent information old older information are of no or of no use to us the accuracy information how much accurate that a certain information is and the timeline of information time of in timeline of information means that are you having information on the correct time a good timeline of information actually means getting the information when you actually need it not before and not after but right when you need it so these things are uh, increased uh, in an electronic commerce platform then another thing is personalization and customization now again this is a term which we uh, mostly use interchangeably but there is a difference personalization here means the targeting of marketing messages to specific individuals by adjustments to messages to a person's name interest and past purchase uh personalization means that when you are trying to communicate to the customer whatever you want to communicate you tailor that message specific to that person so it gives a personal feeling to that customer which is nowadays very important in marketing if you want the customer to feel more personal with you you need to go to personalization for example we regularly get uh, emails from our banks birthday messages from our banks or other organizations now uh these are automated messages which we received and they are personalized to our names and they are personalized to our interests right and somehow we get emails which are based on the past purchases we have made so this is personalization the tailoring of messages specific to the audience on the other hand customization means changing the product according to individual customers there should not be a standard product for everyone you should be able to modify that product according to your needs if you talk about dell computers uh and they, they they were the pioneers uh, in the computer business of course uh, they were the pioneers of uh, introducing this customization what you can do go to their website um pick a product of your own choice you can create a product of your own choice by picking different options according to your requirements uh, how much ram you need how much hard disk you need uh, what type of motherboard you need how much graphics do you need so all these things you just pick them out for yourself dell computers assemble those parts for you and they give you the computer right exactly you want it theek hai so personalization and customization are two very important things and these are the two abilities which e-commerce can give to us and these are very important the next thing is social technology uh obviously nowadays we can see that um there are a lot of social platforms uh we have facebook we have twitter we have instagram um we have google um we have linkedin every all these platforms these are social platforms and uh, they might be used for different purposes but uh, there are a lot of other platforms as well and those platforms we have youtube and those platforms they they do serve as a great place for business as a great place for all your marketing activities uh the most important thing we are going to study more about it in our later lectures but just to give you an overview user content generation is very important and nowadays nowadays what we see as there is a lot of user generated content 
what is YouTube? YouTube is all user generated content. YouTube does not own a single video on that immense website. All that content is user generated. You and I, we can make an account and we can generate content over there. Take Facebook. Facebook owns nothing. All the pictures, all the videos, they, those are shared by people. Those are created by people, created by users. Right. So user content generation is an important aspect of social technology. And nowadays it has turned into a whole new big business, which we can, uh, of course, talk about it later. Uh, all the social platforms, uh, we have Instagram, Facebook and Snapchat and Twitter and uh, maybe TikTok as well. Uh, it's a bit funny, but uh, it's there. So uh, these were a few. Uh, good things about e-commerce a few unique characteristics of e-commerce which makes it better so this is the end of the lecture uh, after this lecture we are going to conduct a live session uh, where we can have a good question answer session at the end of this lecture I have mentioned this amazing quote uh, by this great person who needs no introduction uh, you can read this quote and we can always learn a lot from this quote. Apply this quote in your lives and you will feel a lot better. Thank you.